What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to episode 44 of Hit the Books. Per usual, we're here to talk sports, sports news, sports gambling, you name it in sports, and we at Hit the Books want to deliver it to you. This week, we got a great slate for yins, some normal summertime news out of the NHL and NBA, and the NFL, our bread and butter this week, is so close, I can almost taste it, all 32 teams reporting for training camp. But enough from me, let's jump and introduce my co-host, Hoff, you're up first this week. My friend, how's the week been? Back another week, what do you got? What's going on, everybody? Happy to be back, episode 44. Uh, we are officially, Mackie, what did we decide? Six episodes away from NFL football? Yeah, I think we're going to roll with six here. Yeah, I think we're six episodes away from the NFL regular season. The Rams, Bills, that Thursday night game. Can't wait. And just looking ahead at that. That's been marked on the calendar for a couple months now, but counting down the days, Jesse, I think you said 43 days. So, um, still, but this week we have a lot to get into, a lot of NFL news as we get closer to the NFL season. Uh, 32 teams reporting the camp. Football is officially back. Um, Mackie, how you been, buddy? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm getting real sick of this baseball. Only thing we got on, I wake up every morning and check off my calendar another day until football. But, yeah, I'm all right. A lot, a lot to talk about. A lot of NFL, a lot of uh, trades and things to talk about in the NFL and things going on in all four major sports. My favorite meme is the one where it's like guys will say, oh, I can't wait for football. And then it's the picture of like a Bears uh, drive result chart from like a certain game. And it's like 0 for 3, punt, punt, for 4, punt, 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 punt. Yeah, you know the picture I'm talking about. It's just punt, 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 interception. But, yeah, honestly, it's true. I can't wait for football. I don't give a shit if it's that bad or not. Uh, but that first <laughs> game, that first game is going to be fucking crazy. They knew what they were doing with that one. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a good one. Yeah. Jesse, what's been going on with you? Not too bad for things on my end. I'm excited for this episode this week. A lot of good stuff to look forward to. Let's jump right in. Let's start with the NBA. First stop, former San Antonio Spur guard, DeJounte Murray, now of the Atlanta Hawks, responded to followers on Instagram this week saying, the way that system set you... Yeah, you got to read it with, with his language in it. Oh, God. All right. I quoted, I quoted him word for word. Y yeah. No, I... It's going to be okay. a lot funnier hearing you read this, so I want you to read it. That way... Sorry. <laughs> that, no. No. I'm, I'm not cutting any of this out, by the way. Please don't. The way that system set up, you going to... You, you gone, gone. You be gone. losing for the next 15 years. Problem bigger than basketball. He said it exactly how Jesse said it. All right. When talking about the current state of the, you know, the Spurs franchise. Interesting. All right. Um, what do you guys caught on that one? Uh, I didn't think I was going to get that good of a laugh out of this, but Mackie, what do you think about this? I think he's a pretty good player. Obviously, he was there. How many years is he a Spur? Like three, four years? Three? I don't Three understand. Right. What are you even saying? Yeah, like does he if he doesn't like pop, just don't be the guy to come out and say you don't like pop because everyone else is cool with him and they say he's the best NBA coach ever. So kind of like Belichick. No one ever comes out and like says they hate Belichick and like look at what A B did. Comes out and says he hates Belichick and he's not in the league anymore. Yeah, but yeah, he's at the he's at the Hawks now. Why would he be I don't I don't get it. Yeah, I don't I like he's still like they they were saying something like these fans were kind of commenting on him. They were saying, like, oh, we thought you – his name, uh, Keldon Johnson or another guy on the Spurs. Yeah. We were like, we were hoping you, Keldon Johnson, and uh, who's the young big man they got? Podal? Yeah, Podal. Yeah, they were just throwing, like, a couple names around. They were like, we hope we were hoping, you know, we could land one big name and have you three here and, you know, make a playoff run. But, you know, you went to Atlanta or something like that, like this kind of like – you know what I mean? Like backhanded, like – compliment like hey thanks i wish you could be still be here but you know fuck you you went to atlanta and dejounte <laughs> murray responded with that and was like dude it's a problem bigger than basketball it's like you're in atlanta now dude like just be like don't even answer like i don't understand when guys answer in like certain situations like i like i understand when like i don't know certain guys are sensitive like kd and like the shit that he tweets back at people is so funny but like i don't know i don't really look dude. too much into this the spurs are the spurs and they've kind of set the like, standard could you imagine, like, LeBron tweeting back at someone like that? Yeah. Like, like never. Even, like, Trey Young. Like, no. 
it just like shows immaturity honestly like you're you're a superstar you're gonna have haters people are gonna talk like deal with it he's going to atlanta like it's like think about who that person is on that who's tweeting at him and he's responding or you know exactly instagram comments like are you kidding exactly. me yeah i'd just be like but i don't know i didn't think i was gonna get that good of a laugh out of it so i'm definitely <laughs> that's funny all good stuff all good stuff all right, next up, the, fit, the Philadelphia 76ers and guard James Harden have come to an agreement on a new two-year deal worth $34 million a year. Harden declined a $47 million player option to work out the new deal with the Sixers. A portion of that money was used to sign guard Daniel House. Yeah, so Mar- er, Harden declining that 47 and whatever half million dollar deal to basically $50 million a year. Uh, Take a little bit of a pay cut, team friendly. I guess you'd call team friendly thirty three million a year, but <laughs> like, these guys act like they're fucking heroes for the team. It's like, hey, I'm taking a pay cut. It's like, dude, you make thirty three million a year. What kind of pay cut is that? You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, got, yeah, oh, no, got, yeah, definitely. Oh no, don't worry. We, for real. You took a pay cut. We got Daniel House coming off the bench now. This is sick. Like, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna get past the second round now. Like hopefully Embiid has another MVP year and we might have a chance. Like, it's I don't know. I I just I'm not, I'm not big on this Sixers team. I think Embiid is Embiid, and obviously he's an MVP contender in year in and year out for the past couple of years. It arguably, could have been one, or could have been the MVP last year. But I don't know. The, I think Philly still needs an, another move other than Daniel House to to really. Yeah, like you go. Like who are you gonna bring in at this point? Yeah, like honestly, that's a fifteen million dollar pay cut. Like. Where's that money? Sixers going? are Sixers are one of the best teams in the league, but they will never be championship contenders in my eyes. I'll never look at them and say they're they're, the, they're coming out of the East. Yeah, exactly. There's always going to be a team that I'm like they'll beat the Sixers. Even like I'd pick. I don't know. I'd be getting like obviously it's the middle of summer right now, so I don't really want to do that. But I don't know. Embiid's Embiid. If Embiid's on his game, like. We've seen NBA players carry a team through a series, but it's different. I feel like it's different when it's a center. I mean, he can dominate down in the paint and do his thing down low and go for you know, 37 and 20 rebounds, but you need your guys out in the perimeter hitting shots. You need James Harden to show up in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. It needs to stay out of the strip club more and the, focus more on the maybe getting a ring. Yeah, James Harden has to be a bigger role on that team for them to be competitive. It's just like the stretch. He, he, I mean, for how much playoff experience he has, like he, you know, he's one of the top five, or he's like the top three or something playoff scores that doesn't have a ring. <laughs> it's the list is like Chris Paul, him, Westbrook, Charles Barkley, and I forget who the last one was. That was like the top four. Yeah, well, it's not surprising. He he's always getting like there. He's just not. Actually, he's never even been to a. He's never been. Oh, he's been to a finals with the with the Thunder. Yeah, yeah, with the Thunder. But I mean, it wasn't his team. But, yeah, like, he, was was six, guy, he was a six man then. He's led by the guy that we're about to get into. Jesse, why don't you read this? Yes, let's jump into that. The Boston Celtics are now in conversation to require Kevin Durant. The Celtics reportedly offered the Nets Jalen Brown. Derek White in a draft pick. That trade declined. Brooklyn is reporting asking for Jalen Brown, Mark Smart, Derek White in multiple draft picks for coming years for KD. Back, you start on this. I I I don't know. I don't like that trade by Boston. I don't understand giving up Jalen Brown for KD and Tatum to go play together. I mean they're not that not saying they're the same player because they're definitely different players, but they like they they both do the same thing. You're you're taking two players that play the basically the exact same style of basketball. And I, I, I think that was what was so good with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum is that they were both kind of polar opposites on the court. They didn't really play the game the same way. Yeah. And now you're getting rid of that duo. Obviously Katie's a all time talent, but Still a top I, I don't know. I just, league. yeah. I mean, I guess you're making a good trade when you look at it. Like, 
Jason Tatum, Derek White for for Kevin Durant and whatever picks they had. But I think in this system, I don't really like I don't really like KD in that system without Jason Tate or without uh, Jalen Brown. Yeah. So you could look at this from like two. Obviously, there's two ways to look at this. Obviously, if you're Kevin Durant, you're or the fan perspective, the Kevin Durant, the kind of backlash that he's going to receive if he. I know he would get traded there, but does he have like a lot of say in this? Does he have a no trade clause? Anything like? I don't know, but he he does not. The last thing he cares about is what people say about him. I know it's just like, could you imagine him going to another team? Obviously, when when he went to the Warriors, the seventy three and nine, lost in the finals. Not saying the Celtics are anything compared to that team, but now he would go to two teams the year after they lose in the finals. Um, the Celtics kind of. Would you like the Celtics to win next year? Kind of. Does that addition make the Celtics that much better after losing in the finals? Obviously, losing. Say the trade goes through that Brooklyn wants, and they get Smart, Brown, Derek White, and a bunch of picks. Obviously, the picks won't matter next year. No, I think you tear that team apart. I think the reason that team was so good is because the chemistry that, that all those players had together. That team, that team, oh, like t- take those players, put them on like all like, separate teams, and two two of them are good. Marcus Smart isn't even that good in in a different in a different um, game plan. I think. I think I mean yeah I think that's why I think that's why Boston would rather obviously coming off a defensive player of the year a guy like Smart you could move him right now his price is high stock is high you yeah. know what I mean yeah I think that should be a guy that the Celtics are actually looking to move whether it lands Kevin Durant or not I know this the Nets want I'm blanket Jalen Brown I know that's a guy that the kind of the big name on the block that they want in the trade but them wanting Smart and Brown, they're just kind of like asking. They're like, all right, we'll take your team, just you keep Tatum. And another thing that I didn't even write down, speaking of the Nets, Kyrie saying, coming out and saying that whether KD's there or not, he's he's staying in Brooklyn. Yeah, I don't know. What's Kyrie going to do by himself there, though? Like, I don't know. Imagine him and Jalen Brown there. What do you think That's they'd what I do? Mean. He's, he's, they've played together. We've seen it for 15 games. However many games, you know what I mean. Oh yeah, I forgot Kyrie was in um, Boston. Yeah, like we've seen it. Kyrie was sick in Boston how many years ago? But for the li- very, very, very limited time that we saw him play there. But I-, I don't know. I just feel like if you're Brooklyn, this trade reminds me so much. I don't know why, but like when Brooklyn landed Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce off of the Celtics. Like what was that? Like ten years ago now, they gave them. It was all, like 2011. They I gave think. them all those players and all those picks. This year, it would be kind of reversed. I like that's what I mean. Like they'd be landing all the picks. Like I don't know what to think about this. I just anytime like a big player like this is traded in the NBA, I'm like it's so hard to tell who's gonna win because like if the Celtics land Kevin Durant and you lose in the finals last year, your expectation next year is finals or bust. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's ring or bust. It's ringer, but it's not finals, bro. You just you just lost in the finals. That's what I meant. Like win the finals, win the finals. When I meant when I said finals or bust, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just had to clarify so you knew what I meant. But like you had a player like Kevin Durant, there's no way you go from all right. We have a young team that's kind of overachieving. Like no one picked the Celtics to get to the finals last year. I mean, I mean, their favorites are already next year. And well, yeah. Now, as you say this with like landing him, the odds are already shifting. I saw a couple of sports books drop him from like. 650 to 550 to 450. Like, yeah, I saw that. It's been moving with the Celtics the past couple of weeks. I'm I'm glad because the one team I want to buy in on a future is Clippers just because the moves that they've made and Kawhi Leonard shows up every other year and goes to the finals and it's like worth a shot. Dude, Clippers are really good. If, if they're mean, healthy, dude. they're sick. Kawhi Leonard, is I think he's the most underrated player in the league. That's what I mean, dude. Should we put a future on the Clippers? I don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like the, the, league is, the league is so tough right now. Like, it, He should be so fucking rested. He should be able to play all 82 games, but you know he's not going to. He's gonna, you'd be Like I said a couple weeks ago, you're lucky to get 50 games out of Kawhi Leonard. You're going to get like 53, 54 probably. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a team on mine next year, but if KD lands in Boston, that – changes a lot of things up in the east for me i think because like i said i think the celtics actually downgrade getting him and that's 
kills me to say that when you land a player like Kevin Durant, but like you said, the chemistry that they had last year throughout the playoffs just was something that I think they could run it right back. But like, it also kind of reminds me of like, he didn't have the true guy to go to. Yeah, and KD would be that guy, but you're giving up that entire team to get him. So like, I think they're banking on like guys like Robert Williams to step up. Obviously, a full year with him. He had he was banged up at times last year. Um, there's another guy that would still be there. I'm like blanking on their roster right now. I don't know why. Grant Williams. Grant Williams. He, they're they're expecting him to become like an even more Daniel Tice. Yeah, like God, I think they're looking like Williams, the two Williams guys, Grant and Robert Williams, like looking at them to step up, slide in starting roles. You go, would be the point guard. I don't know. If they lost they'd Smart to, Brown. They'd have to get somebody else. Yeah, they'd have to land. They'd have to sign someone. Rondo, bring back a guy like Rondo. <laughs> yeah, no way. No way. So we'll have to see what happens with this, obviously. Uh, NBA, a couple months away from that. But anytime a guy like Kevin Durant's looking to get moved, you're going to be talking about it. It's going to make headlines. So uh, we'll definitely be covering this as this goes uh, kind of throughout the process. We've now talked about the Suns, the Heat. Um, people were talking about the Thunder for a week or two. Now we're obviously moving on to the Celtics as the favorite to land him. So. Yeah, definitely going to be interesting to see where he goes. Heck yeah, lots of great stuff out of the NBA. A couple months away, like you said, Huff, but look forward to lots more news from us and coverage from us. With that, let's jump into the NHL. Got a quick little slate here. Lots of good stuff, though. The Pittsburgh Penguins have re-signed forward Casperi Kapanen into a two-year deal worth $3.2 million a year. I think a pretty good signing there for the Pens to keep him around. Some people love him, some people hate him, but I, I think I think he has potential. Yeah, he's got to pick his shit up, but it's time to obviously it's kind of you get a deal like this, and a lot of people were talking about him moving on and kind of change of scenery would help him out in his career. But uh, the, obviously, the Penguins getting him back on that deal, uh, they need him to come back. I think part of Malkin coming back here was saying that you know your line's going to return, and obviously, Captain playing with Malkin most of last year. I think that was kind of in the writing when Malkin re-signed, but it was just a matter of time. But it's time for him to step the fuck up. Yeah, I knew you guys were. I knew you guys were had mixed feelings about this guy all last year. At least penguin penguin fans in general. So just he's I don't know, do so you like do you like this? He's so inconsistent. Like he's he has the potential to be like pretty sick. Like honestly, I think yeah, he has definitely the, he has the definitely. potential to be a 25, 30 goal scorer. Especially playing on a line with a guy like Malkin. Like, I know Malkin's not Crosby and, like, not a pass first player, but Malkin gets on a good year. I mean, you obviously, you look back to his fucking MVP year. He had like 70 assists, but like, he's not a shitty passer. You know what I mean? He's not a Vetchkin. Like, he's not shooting the puck every time he gets it on his stick. Like, you play on a line with a guy like that, you're going to get your chances. And he just last year was hitting posts left and right. And then I went to a game and he had a fucking hat trick. Like, I think he had like 10 goals on the year, two games with a hat trick. So, like, that shows you the inconsistency. He'd go for three, he'd go for three, and then just sprinkle in, like, a goal here and there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just need consistency. Not even a goal here and there, though. Like, he, he, I feel like he was so, like, not, didn't even feel like he was there some of the games. Yeah. And for how, like, big he is, like, you need to, I know he's, like, trying to play that sniper style role, and, like, you don't want a guy that changes play style, but like to see him a little more physical if you're not going to be putting the puck in the net 30 times a year. And it's not like he's not quick either. Yeah, he has the he can move like I don't know. He just it's time to step the fuck up, especially getting this deal. Come on, like this got to motivate you. Or like it's time. Come on. If this doesn't, I don't know it will. But next up, we got the Blue Jackets signing Patrick Line. To a four-year, eight point oh, my phone's cracked. Eight point seven million dollar a year deal. Not too shabby there for the Blue Jackets. They're making some moves. What do you got, Mackie? You just saw that coming with Goudreau. I mean, they'll be good together. I'm sure he's pretty excited to have him coming to town. 
Uh, when well, Gaudreau, Gaudreau was on Chicklets uh, the week after signing the the deal with the Blue Jackets, and they were talking about, have you talked to Line yet? And I think he said uh, he hadn't reached out to him, but he obviously he was pretty excited to get the, play, the chance to play with him. So I think that, like I said, similar to the, the Malkin and Kapanen thing, I think it was kind of given that when the one guy signs, the other guy's contract is coming. It's just a matter of time. Um, but, yeah, Columbus – Nice little young team coming up, guys like Wierenski. I don't really know what they have going on in net. Is it still Corpus Solo? Um, I, I think so. I don't know. Yeah, like that team's a couple years away, but obviously you link Gaudreau to, what, an eight- or nine-year deal, and then now you get um, Line A for four more years. So maybe by the end of the Line A's term, you could be – I hate to say contenders because it's Columbus, but win another playoff series. I think that's a great goal. I don't know if it, I don't. I don't, dude. The that like division right now is so good. That's what I mean. Like I don't think. I don't know I don't why they went that, there. So that's why I'm saying like the. Goal I don't even is, think they make the playoffs this year. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I mean. And their goal is in the next four years to win a playoff series. Like that's not. Jero's goal last year with the Flames was to win the fucking cup. What a downgrade. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the logic there. I understand though, Kate. Well, no, I understand leaving Calgary. I don't understand going to Columbus. Yeah, but me too. I don't, know, I don't know why he wouldn't go to the East Coast. I don't know. I think Columbus is the, – yeah, they're a couple of years away from – I really don't know much about their roster, but other than guys like Line, Line A, Wierenski, and now obviously Gaudreau. Yeah, and speaking of leaving the Flames, the Calgary Flames have traded forward Matthew Kachuk to the Florida Panthers in exchange for Jonathan Huberto, Mackenzie Weger, Cole Sch- Schwind. Is it just Schwind? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Is Schwind? Maybe. Cole Schwind. And a first-round pick upon being traded to Florida, Kachuk signed an eight-year deal with the Panthers worth $9.5 million a year. So I actually I wrote down this headline. It uh, that's actually false. So Kachuk signed technically an eight year deal, uh, nine and a half million de- year. Or he signed that contract with the Flames. It was a sign and trade. That doesn't happen often in the NHL. So, um, whenever I wrote this down, I didn't really kind of just assume he signed the deal with the Panthers upon being traded. But he actually signed the deal with Calgary, and then obviously with the writing in there that he's going to get traded. Um, to sign and trade ends up in Florida. Obviously, Huberto, Mackenzie Weger, Schwint, and a first round pick going back to Calgary. Um, first, this is the first time two um, 100 point players have been traded since I believe Wayne Gretzky and I forget the other guy's name. So uh, that just shows you the last time two big names have been traded like this for uh, scoring over 100 points the previous year. Guys like Kachuk and Huberto. So um, Mackie, I, I'm interested to see who you think necessarily won this trade. I know we got into it a little bit um, texting about it, but I just kind of wanted to break down that fact about the the sign and trade and uh, the 200 point players uh, getting exchanged for one another. Yeah, that's the thing here is that everyone looks at it like, oh my God, Kachuk's going to Florida. Calgary's got a guy who had, who had 90 assists last year. I mean, Huberto's no, he, he's not a bum. I mean, that guy could play hockey. You're getting a guy to go up there. I think he'll be great in Calgary. I honestly think Calgary might have won this won this trade. I think Calgary was more forced to make the trade because Kachuk's the one that wanted it out. So Calgary had to settle for something that Florida had to get rid of. Florida gave him a fucking gift wrap present with a tag on it that said, here you go. Here's our current, here's everything we've worked for in the past couple of years. Um, I, the, dude, the Florida Panthers in the past, I completely agree that the Flames won this trade. I mean, you look at Huberto going back, like you said, Kachuk lands in Florida. Yeah, everyone's like all rah rah that Kachuk's, you know, in uh, whatever Fort Lauderdale, wherever the fuck the Panthers play. But like you said, Huberto's going back to the Flames. I know they lost Gaudreau and Kachuk, but Huberto's going there. You look at a guy like Mackenzie Weger, they got on the defensive side. He held up the Florida Panthers, you know, defensive core that entire time that Ekblad was out. Um, stepped up. I think he was no joke on the point on the stat sheet last year. I didn't really look into too many of his points, but I remember seeing him a lot on the power play. He was a hell of a player last year for them. Uh, he's going to go up there and eat a lot of minutes in Calgary. And then I don't know too much about this Cole Schwint guy, but um, 
in the past like year and a half or I forget how many months, but dude, the Panthers have traded so many draft picks for players that are now not there anymore because like Drew, Sherratt, and now Kachuk. And none of the players are there anymore. Yeah. Yeah. We spent they I mean, the team spent all these past couple years building up this team and obviously the uh, last year they were there's people saying this team's gonna win the cup. If they can get past Tampa Bay, they're gonna win the cup. You know what happened against Tampa Bay. It looked like I didn't think this is what they needed to do. Like I didn't think they were this far off. They didn't need to trade Hubert to Uyghur. You know what I mean? And land Kachuk. Like, I didn't think that was the move they needed to do. I think they needed another guy. I didn't think it was move, like you said, a 90 assist center that's been with your team for the past seven years. He's been there for a while. Yeah, he's been with that team. I I think the thing was there. I think the thing was there is that they just won the President's Trophy, dude. Like, they were the best team in the league, and they still ended up. They got swept, didn't they? They. Yeah, they did. We, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, they did. We took Tampa yeah. every game of that series. So they were the best team in the league, and they got swept. So I think they realized they need that. They need to make that blockbuster trade to get that guy and see if that'll work. So you, you know, they got that guy right now. So they, I mean, they had the best team possible last year. When I texted and you guys initially, remember when you texted me, or I texted, I sent you guys like the picture of the score thing, like the score headline, and I was like, uh, "Kachuk to Florida." And then you texted me back and was like, for Huberto. And I just read it and didn't even answer. I was just like, yeah, I don't know what that means, but okay. Didn't even connect it. And then I'm like, read another tweet. I'm like, we're talking like the flame. What did the, why did Florida give up so much? Why did Florida give up so much? And then I started seeing like, obviously all the Matthew Kachuk's of Florida Panther, that whole thing, you know, welcome to Florida, that whole stuff. But I did see a couple of people kind of pointing out like, Huberto to the Flames, like when you would see the official trade from some of these insiders, and I was like, "Wait, they they got what for Matthew Kachuk? Like, I know he's young, but and I know Florida's getting him for eight years or nine years. What's the contract? Eight years? Eight year, nine point five mil. Yeah, like I don't know his exact age, but I don't know. I I like you said, Florida could be looking to make a that that move to get them over the hump. Obviously, the last season's uh, playoff series ending with. Back to back Stanley Cup champions, but um, not being able to score, honestly. Yeah, the, it was the power play. It came down to their power play going completely fucking dry in the playoffs. Uh, Florida just doesn't have that guy. They don't have that guy. They don't have uh, is a Kachuk that, yet. Is Kachuk or, that guy? Uh, you got to give him the chance to be. He's going to get his chance. See, the thing about Tampa is that they have like four of those guys. Yeah, Kucherov, Point. Stamp Kucherov goes. point, at, yeah, dude, it's freaking ridiculous. You could send that power play out. They need a goal. That's the line that's coming out. Them three. You put Headman and Sergey Chev on the point. Gonna get a... Team's lethal. Yeah, it's gonna. Be, I mean, they're gonna be around for a couple years. I know they just lost a lot, but I think Tampa's legit still. Um, They'll they'll be contenders for the next five years at least. Yeah, as long as Vasilevsky's still going. I was gonna say maybe when Stamkos and Hedman kind of start to age off, it'll be interesting. But like you said, the next three to five years, I think they're around for sure. Unless you want to rip into these last two things, and then we can get into some NFL talk. Let's do it. Yes, sir. The Nashville Predators signed Nino Niederreiter to a two-year deal. Kind of like that. Yeah, I don't have much to say about that. Young guy. Pretty guy. I wasn't even really paying attention to Nashville. I mean, Nashville just keeps adding like guys like this. I mean, they weren't far off again, like I said, last year, Colorado, but... Nashville's a team that people are going to be watching next year. I think I think good things coming out of Nashville. Like I said, not too not too much from necessarily this guy, but to get back to Nashville, they keep <laughs> adding kind of role players, which is never a bad thing in the NHL, and it's proven to be good. So, um, just need Soros. That like that dude's a stud. He could be literally you know, Shesterkin and Vasilevsky, but he's going to be up there for the Vesna whether he wins it or not. But he's going to be up there for the next couple of years as well. In the conversation.
Yes, sir. In the um, oh god, hold on. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, and the last point in the NHL that we got is the San Jose Sharks hire ex Rangers head coach David Quinn as the eleventh head coach in franchise history. This guy sucks. He was good at BU. He's good. He was a good college coach. Uh, he's not a good. Uh, he's not a good NHL coach. From what I've seen so far, I don't know. You can prove me wrong, but this is a pretty shitty franchise, too. So yeah, I was just gonna say, Sharks ain't too nothing special. So yeah, I don't got much to say about this. Listen to this. Scherzer just said he hates pitchcom and it should be illegal as stealing signs is part of the game. <laughs> what? What? How is stealing signs a part of the game? But he's so fucking just old now. He's like starting to get mad at like computers being involved in the game. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, that. While, That's a pretty while, stupid thing. while we're sidetracked and keeping this thing rolling, um, Bubba Watson just switched over to live. Did he? Yeah. Damn. That bag. They're all. It's just it's future. You're gonna live. Do you guys hear about? They're trying to get Charles Barkley, and he said, "I'd be stupid to not take the interview." I didn't see that, but that's smart of them. For what? They're they're looking to get Charles Barkley. Not to golf. Obviously, he's fucking terrible at golfing. They want to get him for an analyst, and um. He said, I'd be stupid to not take the interview. Obviously, he knows, everyone in the world knows the kind of money they're offering up, but he's not saying he's taking it or wouldn't take it, but he's saying, I'd be stupid to not take the interview and see the number that they're going to put on the table. He, he, they, yeah, he's right. And he and everyone already said, if he takes a deal with Liv, he's done. Contract's done. Well, I don't, I don't know why you would want to leave TNT at this point. That's what I mean, dude. That show is fucking perfect. Him, Shaq, Kenny, what's his name? Ernie, they're the best. Don't Ernie. change it. But let's get back into this. Let's switch over to some NFL talk. Football is officially back. 32 teams have officially reported for training camp. We said that early on. Um, that is just that is the headline that I need to tell me that football is back. Not back yet back dude see how many headlines we got here football is back back it's back i'm planning fantasy not back enough planning fantasy football i'm starting to pick out my team it's that time of year i can smell it yeah it's like a tease right now i'm over, ready we're over a month away once we're under a month yeah, we're close you? once we're under a month yeah once you're under a month you know we're not under a month yet next week next monday is under a month I'm very excited for the NFL this year. Lots of good talk coming from us every each and every week, each and every game. Don't forget to listen in each week. With that, the Arizona Cardinals and quarterback Kyler Murray have reached an agreement. Five-year extension, $230.5 million. The deal includes $160 million in guaranteed money. Good deal there for Kyler Murray. What do we think, boys? I'm not the biggest Kyler Murray fan. I don't know. Mackie, what do you think? I like it. I like him. Okay, I don't love the deal. I like Kyler Murray, but, like, you haven't even won a playoff game yet. Like You're, you're giving this man a quarter billion dollars. Obviously, the big and, thing coming out of the deal, people are noticing the, the the clause in the deal that he has to do four hours of independent study every week during the season, uh, not including bye yeah. weeks and leading up to the season. But um, obviously, a lot of people are saying right now, and like what I'm going to say, if you're only completing four hours of film studies, an NFL quarterback that's making 166 million dollars a year, you need to be doing like 10 times that like i like i'm not saying they're not doing all this shit on the field like i know what goes into that but uh, buddy you're making fucking nine digits you need to i don't want to hear oh i'm only doing four hours this week you know i watched from 
noon to 4 p.m. on Monday. I'm good until Sunday. You know, we're playing the Raiders. I don't got too much to worry about or some bullshit like that. Like, obviously, uh, they're, they're clearly worried, like, his contract with FaZe. Like, that's what all these people are pointing out. And, like, whether it's – I mean, they can keep track of, like, who watches film. Like, I wonder if it came down to something like that. They're like, hey, Kyler's not watching his shit or, like, you know, is he tra- straight up just fucking this good? At no, you're not. Like, if you're worried about that, if you're worried about that, you're not offering him a quarter billion dollars. Why? I mean, they put but they like, put the clause in there. Yeah, because pe- people tend to fall off after you get money like this, and he hasn't proved anything yet. So maybe they're just like making sure that he needs to take it serious. Still, so. said if he if if he can't prove that like whatever the I mean like, like I said they can you know what I mean it's twenty twenty two you know when people watch it said if like for he fails to do something throughout the week the contract is completely can be completely voidable like obviously guaranteed money and shit comes into play there but it's like the cardinals kind of or like i don't know what like i don't know obviously if you're kyler you're like fuck it yeah i'll do it four hours like i don't give a shit but i don't know i just think it's interesting you haven't seen this kind of at least to this like extent come out i guess or kind of get to the level of people talking about it like this um, in recent years with other contracts, I guess, but I don't know. I guess this is kind of similar to like, didn't Jerry Jones used to have uh, like a fucking babysitter for what was his name on the Cowboys? Terrell Owens. <laughs> probably. Honestly, I don't know, but probably. I feel like there used to be a rumor that Jerry Jones had babysitters for like some of the players on the teams to make sure they wouldn't do shit. I could be totally that wrong on sense. that, but. I don't know. I just feel like this Kyler thing got like way kind of like blown out of proportion with like how much people are talking about this fucking four hours a week of film he has to do. But like you said, I'm going to get into the football aspect. He doesn't even want a playoff game and you're giving this guy all this money. Um, I know he's had his flashes, obviously the Hale Murray, the play to he hop against the Bills. Um, and I don't know. He's it's the second half of the season with the Cardinals every year. It's going to be, how can we get through this? How can we, you know what I mean? How can we end up, you know, making a push and winning a playoff game? Obviously, like we said now, Kyler, not winning a playoff game. How do we get home field? Um, tough division now with San Francisco. I mean, Seattle, Seattle losing Russ. But you still got the Rams, defending Super Bowl champions. So um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the Cardinals. They're obviously losing Chandler Jones. They still got guys like Buda Baker, but still got guys like J.J. Watt. James Conner, I mean, they lost Christian Kirk. Not saying he's much of a player. Got fucking the bag from the Jaguars. Can't blame him, but I don't know what to think about the Cardinals going into the next year. I think they'll be all right. They're definitely a playoff team if they play to their potential. But um, I don't know. I don't think they're going to win that division. Yeah. Do you think three teams make the playoffs from that division, though? That's a good question. I don't know. I'm at- San Francisco is really up in the air. I don't really know what they're going to do. Trey Lance could be a dud, dude. I agree. They, and they just said they're moving on to Trey Lance. Yeah, so. We might as well just get into that right now. So, Jesse, you want to read off that headline? 49ers general manager John Lynch, head coach Kyle Shanahan, met with quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo this morning. The three talked, and after the meeting, Shanahan told reporters, we have moved on to Trey Lance. Yeah, so it's a, it's a new era in San Francisco. Coming off an of NFC championship loss with a different quarterback, you, you, you question how this team is going to be this year. So what do you think, Huff? I don't know. I'm, I'm excited for Trey Lance. Obviously, the, the limited time that we've seen him in the NFL and the times that he's been brought in with Shanahan uh, with the 49ers, but obviously his injury in college didn't see much of him in college. So... I am excited to see what he can do, but like I said, tough division. I don't know who the 49ers play week one, but I am excited to see him because obviously this 49ers team coming off an NFC championship uh, appearance, defensive, you know what I mean, from the defensive side of the ball, they're still the same team basically, um, bringing most of the guys it's back. So yeah, they're, they got, the they're the same defense, so they still got studs. They're still going to be legit on the defensive side of the ball. Both still. Niners play the Bears week one. All right, so yeah, it's going to be exciting to watch Trey Lance week one. Might take it. Might might bet on that. He gets a he, he gets an easy easy first round first game matchup of his career. So get a little hype after week one. 
I'm probably going to bet on them week one. Actually, that sounds like a fun game to watch and a fun game to bet. Justin Fields, Trey Lance. Oh, I didn't even think about Justin Fields. That is going to be a good one. Yeah, and with that, jumping over, Julio Jones signs a one-year deal with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I really like this. Going down to hang out with Tom. Obviously, yeah, the retirement tour, head down to Tampa Bay. Uh, see what we can do next year. Tampa Bay still a top Super Bowl favorite. Next year, they're the favorite to come out of the NFC. Other than the Bills, they're the, they're the second team that's favorited to win the Super Bowl. I don't know their exact or latest odds. A guy like Julio going there. Now I have uh, Mike Evans, Godwin, and Julio. So Tom has the weapons, losing Gronk. Um, but gaining a guy like Kyle Rudolph at the tight end position from the Giants, a uh, very stable tight end throughout his career. Um, they still have guys like Cameron Brait and obviously the running backs. He lost um, Ronald Jones, I believe, to the Chiefs, but um, still got Fournette. Hit rumors him coming into training camp a little overweight. But guy like playoff Lenny, come playoff time, he'll be ready to go. So I, I think I think Julio to the Bucks is a great is a good landing spot for him. Not too much is going to be asked to him, but when he comes in, uh, you have a veteran receiver that's been there, done that, and uh, when his moment comes, he's going to be ready. Yeah, this reminds me a bit of um, OBJ to the Rams last year. I like even that, though that comparison. Was a mid-season thing. I like that comparison. Even though that was a mid, yeah, but uh, he's just going to be that guy who will be he'll be a, he'll be a name out there, so it takes attention away from other players, and he gets that. Third and nine. When you need the nine yards, he'll be sitting right at the at the at the uh, first down marker, and he'll make that catch. And he's he's just he'll be an important little piece to this team. He's a little add on to this team. He won't be that guy. He won't he won't be 2017 Julio Jones, but it's Julio you know, Jones. He's still like, Julio Jones. Some scrub corner isn't just tackling Julio Jones in the open field, like exactly. He's gonna get, he, he may not be who he used to be, but he's still Julio Jones. He's still not going down easy, like. He's going to fall ahead for four, you know what I mean, three, four yards and get you that first down. Like you said, he's going to become that first down guy. Obviously, with guys like Evans and Godwin there, he's not too much is going to be asked of him. But like you said, not going to need to be 2017 Julio Jones or the year that they went to the Super Bowl. Is that the year they went to the Super Bowl? Yeah, it was. Okay. I didn't know. I just wanted to make sure. 2017 and then – little side note with uh, – yeah, right. Remember when he was on the Falcons, him – Matt Ryan and Roddy White. You remember Roddy White? Yeah, I do. He was a stud. He's 83, right? 84. 84, 84 and 11. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're Both right. Both had dreadlocks. They were sick. They were like the swaggiest receiving core. And Atlanta has those sick I, – I love Atlanta's uniforms. And they say we'll get into the, the new uniforms, but they definitely have the newest the – cool, the coolest new helmets. Of any team, in my opinion, but we'll get into that. Yeah, Julio to the Bucks. I like it. Yeah, it should be good for them. Yeah, I think he's a good, uh, good receiver to get down there for Tom. Some sad news: the Houston Texans announced Sunday that rookie wide receiver John Mechie will miss the 2022 regular season after being diagnosed with leukemia. Pretty sad news for the 22 year old. Yeah, obviously tragic news. You'd never want to see something like this. Yeah. Some good news out of it. It is the most cure curable leukemia there is, I guess. So that's in terms terrific. Of like life and death, it's looking good. But for football, it just it just sucks for his career. Yeah. So um, he, whenever this came out, I remember seeing it, the statement that he released. Uh, he said he's in pretty good spirits. Obviously, getting that news at the age of 22 and coming into your rookie year in the NFL, uh, you're on the fucking highest horse you could ever imagine. And then you get this news and that you're not going to be able to play in your rookie year. And it obviously sucks to uh, get that news, but uh, like you said, Mackie, it's it is. I did see it was one. It is the whatever most curable type of cancer or whatever or leukemia, but. Um, he is expe- I said I I heard somewhere it's like not official that he misses the whole year, but uh, they're basically just kind of indefinitely he's out for this season. 
Yeah, the problem with this shit is that it makes you so weak for the time being. It's so hard to come back from. Yeah, that's the thing. And obviously him coming from Alabama, he's, uh, he was a stud all last year for Alabama, missing the national championship, I believe, with the leg injury. But um, So he's missed some key time, the injuries, and then now getting this, it just sucks for him. But um, obviously prayers to him, and obviously I hope everything's the best. But Texans, not too much coming out of them this year, but maybe in the coming years getting guys like him back and – Another year with draft picks, you know, maybe look out for this team in the next couple of years. Yeah, yeah best, best of luck for him. Definitely keep an eye on that. Two-time Super Bowl champion wide receiver Danny Amendola has announced his retirement from the NFL. Amendola reported that multiple teams were calling this offseason and also said it was better than I could ever imagine when reflecting on his career. So great career from him. What do you guys think? You want to start on him? Yeah, I mean, he's he, good career, good player. He, what do you get, two Super Bowls with Tom? Yeah, a Tom, Tom receiver that just kind of went up to New England, found his role, kind of – he fit that system perfectly in New England. Yeah, he – he was just, he was a system player. He kind of reminds me of a like Cole Beasley. Cole Beasley didn't didn't get to play oh, with uh, Tom Brady. All those guys, like, they're Bulls, all kind of similar. Yeah, I will say Tom Brady kind of made his legacy what it is, made him a name. But Danny Amendola, he he was a good player, he's a good role player. Oh yeah, good option. And all Amendola, Edelman, all those guys, you know, they they love Tom. They know that without Tom, they weren't much. Yeah. A hell of a career, two Super Bowls. He was on a couple teams that I didn't even know about. He was an Eagle, a Cowboy, a Ram, and obviously the Patriots, Lions, Texans. I think those are the six teams. Yeah, I knew he was in the Cowboys. I didn't know any of the other teams, though. So. Yeah, let's get into some of this, this Tyreek Hill talk. He was on first take. Let's hear what he had to say, Jess. Yeah, the Dolphins wide receiver Tyreek Hill said, Zach Wilson is a dog, but I'd rather play with the most accurate quarterback in the NFL. As he said, as he said, how fun ESPN's first take on Monday why morning. Is he, why is he even talking about Zach Wilson? Okay. They were asking him, I guess, I forget where they said he had the chance. They, they asked, they said he had the chance to go to the Jets. And they said something about, uh, he said like, oh, Zach Wilson's a dog, but I'd rather play with the most accurate quarterback in the NFL. They asked him a follow-up question, and he said, uh, and, uh, and I quote, I wrote this down, you know, Tua is not your typical gunslinger, but if you really pay attention to his game, you will notice everything is spot on, everything is pinpoint, you know, ball is on time, his fundamentals are on point. High praise from Tyree Kill, obviously, uh, the newest addition for the Miami Dolphins coming in there, training with Tua all, se- or all off season, uh, has high hopes for his new quarterback, He's been comparing him to Mahomes way too much, if you ask me. I really think reality's going to hit him once the NFL, once the season actually starts. Yeah. Have you heard how much he's comparing him to Mahomes? Yeah, he just keeps talking about it. Like Mahomes, and like, dude, like you had the life with Mahomes. Like, stop acting like he wasn't anything special. Like, you're gonna reality's going to hit you with an average quarterback like Tua, a below average quarterback like Tua. And when you're not going to get all the yards, the catches that you're used to getting, he's not going to keep the same energy all season. And when a guy like Travis Kelsey isn't out there running around too, that you have to worry about him. Yeah, you got three guys chasing you around because you don't have three other receivers that are heavy threats. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't like how much he keeps comparing Tua to Mahomes. That's the. It's kind of disrespectful. Yeah, I mean, that's what I mean. That's the thing that like keeps rubbing me the wrong way. I'm like, dude, stop bringing Mahomes into this. Like, there's a difference between, like, supporting your quarterback that you have now rather than, like, comparing him to your old one. Like, dude, you don't have to bring him like, into it at all. I know you got traded there, so you're, like, you're trying to act like, I love where they traded me. Like, I'm here. You know what I mean? Like, I love my new team. Like, obviously, like you said, there's a difference between hyping up your quarterback and being, like, way over the top. Like, dude, Mahomes carried you to a Super Bowl. Like, I know you were a key part of that team. Without Mahomes, that team doesn't get out of the first round when they were down 24 nothing to the fucking Texans or the Browns, whoever it was. Texans? 24-3. 24-3 to Sean Watson and the Texans. 
Texans didn't score a point the rest yeah. of the game. Yeah, it should be uh should be fun to watch. Tyreek Hill down in Miami. And like balls thrown over his head. I think he's gonna be good, but like I have I also have like a different perspective on two. I think he could take a step this year. Does Tua become a guy that we're sitting here talking about? Like right now, like I know it sounds like you you know, you said below average, so I don't know with a guy like Tyreek, does he is he able to take that next step? I know mean, I'm not necessarily like asking you, like I mean, if you want to step in and tell me what you think, but I mean, he has Gasecki, Devonte Parker. I think is still there. No, he might be a Patriot now. Um, but I don't know Miami. I feel like they've made some additions over the past couple of years with some draft picks, and obviously the guys they have on the defensive side of the ball, Zavi and Howard, and um, they have a couple other guys that I'm forgetting, but. Christian Wilkins, the guy from Clemson, they drafted a couple years ago, but um, I don't know. What do you do? You think? Do you see Tua taking the next step with a guy like Tyreek Hill? I just don't see how they get a playoff spot. The Jets, if you think about it, the Jets or Dolphins going to finish it with a higher record. The Dolphins will definitely be the second best team in that division this year. I think. I think the Patriots fall off this year. I don't think they make the playoffs. I said the same thing. I think Mac Jones has a second year, like a sophomore slump. Yeah, I think uh, Miami will come in second in that division, but I don't think they make the playoffs. Three, three, I think three teams out of that, out of the AFC. Uh, what do you guys? North, East. I think three. You're not the North. No, they're the, they're not the, the East. They're the, the East. North. I thought you were saying, "What are you guys?" No, the I know I what think, you're saying. Keep going. They're the East. I think three teams out of the AFC North make the playoffs. Okay. Oh, I see what you were saying. So you're saying basically everyone but the Steelers. The North yeah, make it. Kind of. If if the Browns come out like they should, yeah, I'm not. I'm 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 not like taking that like a fucking Steeler shot. I'm just truly trying to understand what you're saying. But yeah, you think you have Ravens? No, yeah, I think three teams. Yeah, because then there's no spot. There's no spot for the for the Dolphins there. Colts, Titans. Yeah, see, both of them can make it too. You, I just don't see a way that Miami slips into the playoffs, but into a playoff spot. Might be something I want to get into with the, the if we have some a little bit of time, some of these teams' odds and make the playoffs. All right, let's keep rolling in the NFL. The Los Angeles Chargers have hired former WVU star quarterback and Miami Dolphin Pat White to join the team as an offensive assistant. Huff and Mackey being uh, Huff being a grad from WVU and Mackey finishing up there shortly. What do we think, Mackey? You want to start us off? Mackey, do you remember Pat White? Yeah, I mean, he was a stud He's, at West yeah, Virginia. Yeah, he was. He the, he is what made me want to go to West Virginia. Yeah, he's just a he's just an he was an absolute beast at West Virginia. He didn't really have the best NFL career. Uh, yeah, obviously, he was with the the Dolphins for a couple of years and just never really kind of found his footing in the NFL. But um, I love seeing him and Geno Smith kind of just keep making their way back in the league. Yeah. You know, Gina's going to be a Keeping starter. Their names. Gina's arguably a starter for the Seahawks next year. I don't know. Dude, if Drew Lockford I mean, I guess, Drew Lock yeah. comes in and throws three picks, what is stopping you from being like, fuck it, put Gino in? Yeah, I guess you're right. Like, what's Drew Lock done? Wrapped on the sidelines? Wrapped on the side. Yeah, that video where he just sits there. Well, I forget this. Yeah, one. it's the first thing I think I of every time. Exactly, you that's all I think of when I see him. I don't even know the song he's singing, but he just—he literally—he just sings the whole song on the sideline, and everyone's like, "All right, is this dude gonna maybe not throw a pick next time?" <laughs> Five and off three interceptions. <laughs> yeah, like, all right, dude, maybe uh, some film. We take the Kyle, maybe maybe we gotta give Drew Locke the Kyler clause. He's gonna watch he's gonna, he's gonna watch four hours of film every week or he just or we get his paycheck. We're gonna find a way to get that that going. <laughs> we went over this 49ers news, so I'll get into this. Uh arguably the top linebacker in the NFL coming out with a little bit of a statement. Colts linebacker Darius Leonard told reporters Tuesday that he now wants to be called Shaquille is what his family calls him. From here on out, he is now Colts linebacker Shaquille Leonard. What is – is that like his government I guess name? he's getting it – I don't know if he's getting it like officially changed, but like I think that's what he wants. 
on Madden and like ESPN to use and like the Colts to use on the roster. You know what I mean? Like, it's very strange. I don't know why you don't just stick with yeah, Darius. Yeah, that's what Jared I mean. You're the best linebacker in the NFL. You're going to change your name. Yeah, like, nobody knows Shaquille Leonard. I was going to be like, who the fuck's that? So I had to put this in there because if I would have read that and been like, who the fuck is that? I had to make sure, like, we remind ourselves that. Oh, he decided to change his name. Welcome to the league, Shaquille. <laughs> Welcome to the league, Shaquille <laughs> Leonard, linebacker, Colts. I think I think his stats have to restart. <laughs> Look, he's a new player. <laughs> those are Darius. Those are Darius Leonard's yeah. stats. You need to start. Like, hey, sorry, I don't know who Shaquille Leonard is, but uh, Darius Leonard has these stats. You also have to switch your number. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he definitely does. I think that's only fair. Next up, we got Mitch Trubitsky has the sixth best record by any starting quarterback since 2018 with a minimum of 20 starts. He is 20 and 13, sitting, uh, behind, sitting behind Patrick Mahomes, Drew Brees, Lamar Jackson, Tom Brady, and Aaron Rodgers. Weird stat. Win percentage. Correct. He clearly has like the least amount here besides Drew Brees, who has been retired for two years. That is, I was like, what? And then I had to look at this graphic, and I was like, okay. And I'm looking at the records, and I'm like, wait, there's definitely dudes with better records than that. I think at least, maybe, like maybe not, but. I mean, he has more games than Drew Brees. Yeah. No. Whiskey's... No, they literally have the same. he has got that dog in him. I like that. Yes, Mackie, you're right. I can't do ads. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, good for him. <laughs> I don't know how much this says about his game, but... It doesn't say much, but it doesn't say anything about his game. No, it doesn't. I just found it interesting, that's all. Into some uniform talk okay. as we look ahead to the NFL yes. season. This is basically what we have left. A lot of these teams announcing uh, the past couple of weeks, we've had 13 NFL teams in total unveil their secondary helmet for the 2022 season. Uh, nine teams announcing a new alternate helmet, and uh, some of which we've already gone over, including the likes of the Pan- Bengals and Panthers uh, in the past couple of weeks. And then we had four teams unveil their new helmets. But these teams brought back more of a classic throwback uh, look. I believe they're calling it the alternate helmets, or uh, no, it's throwback, and alternate is the new one. So. Uh, some of the teams with the new ones that we haven't gone over, uh, the Cardinals bringing the, out these black helmets. I saw an up close shot. They have like the red shine on them. They're pretty fresh. So uh, Kyler gets the new deal, gets some new helmets, new look. I don't know. I think Cardinals coming off that the white helmet. It's going to be a little interesting to see them because they get those black jerseys. I think the mock up is to wear them with the black jerseys, and it ended up looking pretty fucking sick. I don't know if anyone saw that, but I just ended up putting this image in here with the helmet. Those Bengals helmets are dirty. Bengals are the. I like the Commanders too. I actually do kind of like the Command- Commanders. Texans is yeah, nice. Yeah, Commanders coming with a black one. So we'll just, I'll just kind of rip through them. So obviously, some of these teams coming out with new helmets. Uh, like I said, we've gone over the Bengals with their white helmet. Uh, and what was the other one that I said? The Panthers with their black helmet. So some of these other teams coming out with new ones. Uh, the Cardinals coming out with a black helmet. That they're going to be wearing with their black jerseys. Black helmet with some red speckles in it. I think they actually look pretty fresh. Saw an up close look of them, uh, couple with the flash on them where you can kind of see the this, this shine a little better. But um, teams like Washington Commanders bringing out a black helmet with the the new logo on the front. Uh, that'll be interesting. Obviously, they don't even have a. I mean, it's the it's the Washington Football Team W. So I guess that's like the the look they're going for. But uh, Cowboys coming coming with a white one. I think that's also going to be considered one of the throwback ones. I see that in both images, which kind of threw me off. But Eagles going with a black helmet. That's going to look pretty fucking sick. I think they also another team with their I black jerseys. I like those Eagles black ones a lot. That wing is sweet. Yeah, I think I think those are going to look fresh, especially when the Eagles again wear the black jerseys. Um, or they're bringing back the Kelly green ones this year. I thought they would do the Kelly green helmets. 
That's the picture I see. I see why well, see a picture of football players wearing the Kelly green one, but the picture of the helmet is in, it looks to be black. Okay, maybe that is the helmet that from that uniform and I'm just thrown off, but uh, it says uh, the Philadelphia Eagles are debuting a black helmet to go with their black jerseys. Okay, black jerseys. Love their black jerseys. Kelly green uniforms as their alternate in 2023. Oh, 2023. It's not this year. So what helmet are they going to use? Well, they're probably going to change it from this black one. Fair, fair. That makes sense. Uh, the Jets also coming out with a black helmet with the green font on the side. The Jets kind of a newer look. Obviously, the Jets uniforms are kind of like new age. Um, not too huge on these Jets helmets. It'll be, interesting. It'll be maybe a better look when you see them on the field. Uh, the Saints bringing out a black helmet. A lot of teams doing black helmets. Uh, as you see, a lot of these teams with like a white or the Saints in the Saints' sake, they have the gold helmet. Uh, Switching over to black. And then another one that I actually really like is the Texans uh, going from a solid blue helmet with the logo on the side to a red helmet with the logo on the side. I think that's going to look sick because they have the red jerseys to go for that all red, white, and blue look. But the mainly red, I think that's going to look really good. I'm excited to see the Texans don those jerseys. Uh, some of these throwback ones, though. Um, actually, there was one team, I believe I skipped the Bears. Um, Bears coming out with these orange fucking uniforms. They look terrible in my opinion. I like the color orange, but these fucking uniforms are brutal. Uh, Jesse, you see this image I put down here? Yeah, those are brutal. Helmet is just so like it looks like a basketball, and like I don't know why, but like yeah, it does. I don't know why, but the like the Browns helmets don't look that bad. But I guess it's because they don't wear orange jerseys with them. I think you're right. I like really the Browns do. wear a solid orange helmet, and the Browns actually tweeted back at them and was like, oh, "I wonder where you got your idea from." It's like that's not really that funny. I mean, <laughs> like it's, not, it's like it's just whatever, fucking like, stupid. Gee, like, yeah, it's just fucking stupid. But like these uniforms are trash. The jersey or the helmet's trash. The jerseys looked cool last year with the blue helmet, so um, probably should have just went with a orange helmet with a blue jersey, maybe white. I don't. I, I really don't know. But that that's definitely the one that's the dud of the group of this is the bears orange helmet with the orange jerseys but uh, the four teams coming out with the throwback helmets like i already said the cowboys doing the white helmet bringing that look back uh the new york giants are going for the 1980s i believe they're calling them the legacy uniforms bringing back the old school uh new york giant uh kind of royal blue uh, red white and blue look with the the darker helmet with the the font giants on the side so these are another one that I think are really fresh. The page. I was just going to say that they're simple and to the point, and I like them yeah, a lot. The Gi- new Giants helmets are sick. It's going to be a shame to see them lose 35 to 7 in those uniforms. But I believe they already announced they're playing the Commanders and the Bears in the two games that they're wearing those uniforms. So obviously, two games that they think they can win. They need those wins bad, yeah, man. They're, plan- they're <laughs> planning those wins out. They're like, all right, we're going to wear the cool jerseys against the Commanders. I think that's a win. And the Bears, that's a win. So, yeah, we're going to wear the legacy jerseys those games. That's going to be good. Um, but And then the Patriots bringing back the white Pat the Patriot helmet, obviously, when, the, when, certain, when this helmet thing came out, certain teams were just kind of expected to come back with helmets like this, and the Patriots were definitely number one with that. Uh, so it is official. I like that stripe on there a lot. Yeah, they're going back to the classic white helmet. Those are fresh. Uh, and then my favorite of the group is the the Atlanta Falcons going with the old school red helmet with the old school Falcon logo. Uh, these are definitely my favorite ones. I'm really excited to see see Atlanta in these jerseys. Yeah, I'm excited for those. I like the stripe a lot on that one. And yeah, going with the throwback, you can never go wrong. I like it a lot. Yeah. Excited to see all these in action, especially on TV. Like, I think they're going to look real bright and, and nice. You know, it's, uh, they're going to make sure they look good, in my opinion. Exactly. It's obviously a lot different seeing them on Instagram than seeing them in real life or on TV, like you said, on Red Zone or if you're just watching a game. But, um, yeah, may, I mean, maybe these Bears ones won't look that bad, but I think they're going to look pretty fucking bad. They're going to look weird. I mean, it's that all, all that orange together is just uh, – too much orange. That's brutal. I don't know. And he's got the orange gloves on. You can barely see the football. Oh, that's brutal. You're right. But 
obviously uh that's gonna kind of wrap up the little bit of uniform i believe that's kind of gonna do it for the teams coming out with the uniforms i don't know if there's gonna be any other teams coming out with any as we get closer to the season but like i said 13 of the 30 32 teams have 32 teams have announced uh, a new helmet or secondary helmet i guess you would say but yeah, we're gonna get kind of move on into these madden ratings madden's been kind of coming out with some of their overall player ratings the past couple weeks, week in and week out at different positions. Uh, and this past week, they announced the top 10 quarterbacks based on overall rating. Uh, we'll go over the top 10 quarterbacks in the game and then also the top 10 rookie quarterbacks in the game. I'm going to get right into it, go 10 to 1, top 10 quarterbacks based on overall rating. Um, Matt, number 10, we got Matt Stafford of the LA Rams coming off a Super Bowl championship, sitting at an 85 overall. Uh, number nine, Lamar Jackson at an 87 overall. Number eight, Russell Wilson, 87 overall, tied with Lamar. Number seven, just ahead of them, is Justin Herbert at an 88. Number six, Dak Prescott sitting at an 89 overall. Number five, coming off a Super Bowl appearance, Joe Burrow sitting at a 90 overall. Number four, Josh Allen sitting at a 92 overall. Number three, Patrick Mahomes sitting in the 95 overall number two the back-to-back -back mvp of the nfl aaron Rodgers, sitting in the 96 and number one the goat tom brady sitting in a 97 overall um yeah so that's gonna do it for your top 10 quarterbacks but i'll get into kind of my breakdown of this uh, my little i don't hate these rankings you don't no not really i don't i don't I would switch Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. I would switch. I was gonna say um, I'd switch Rodgers one ninety seven, Brady two, tied with Mahomes. Maybe I don't know. I yeah. And then Allen. I'd like to see Josh. I'd like to see Josh Allen at like ninety three, and yeah, and it may be a high overall, but I think he should still be four. Yeah, and I'd like to see my boy Russ ahead of Herbert. I'd like to see him like tied with Dak. I, I don't know why they're so high on Herbert. He hasn't even been to the playoffs yeah, yet. I'd like to see Russ. You lost to the Raiders in a winner or a winner go to the playoffs game or go to the playoffs or go home game. Yeah. In overtime. I mean, you got to win that game against the Raiders, yeah. dude. I'd like to see Russ tied with Dak at an 89, too. And Lamar. Yeah. What the yeah. fuck is this disrespect Lamar keeps getting, dude? I don't know, man. Yeah, I think. Uh, Herbert should be Herbert should be ten, I you can, think. You could argue all these guys overall could go up one. Stafford an eighty five. Yeah. I think he's like an eighty six. Lamar Jackson at least an eighty eight. I think Herbert should be like an eighty six. Yeah, Herbert's the only one Stafford. Herbert's the only one that I think needs nerfed a little bit to an eighty seven. Yeah. Herbert shouldn't be ten, but he, he I think Herbert above Stafford. Herbert should be nine. Okay. okay. Move up Lamar and Russ. Slide Herbert. I mean, Stafford's coming off a Super Bowl, so I feel like he should get the higher overall. Then, yeah, I think I do think Stafford should be an eighty-six, and that's still above Herbert. If I say he should be an eighty-seven, so that's still below. I mean, yeah, yeah, I do. There's not too much to do on the left side. I do like the one through five. I'll, I'll, you can I said he's the goat. Give him number one. It's a one overall difference. Back to back MVP. I think if anything, you give him the same, but. You know, they would never do that for the, the sake of conversation yeah, and comparison. So, Tom um, gets the edge on the overall rating. But we'll get into the top five uh, rookie QB overalls. Um, I'll go five to one, I guess. So, um, number five, we got Sam Howell at 67 overall. At Corral, a 68 overall, the Carolina Panthers. Kenny Pickett, a 68 overall, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Blake Willis, a 69 overall of the Tennessee Titans, and the top-rated rookie quarterback coming into Madden 2023 is going to be the Atlanta Falcons' newest draft pick, Desmond Ritter, sitting at a 70 overall. Obviously, these ones, there's not too much to argue. I don't have too much to say about any guy that hasn't taken a snap yeah, what in the are you NFL. Gonna... Um, it's so hard to put a number next to these guys. And obviously, like guys like Malik Willis isn't going to see the field. Pickett may not see the field if Trubisky starts out hot. Like, 
a corral with the addition of Baker Mayfield. What's his, you know what I mean? What's his future in Carolina going to look like if Baker comes in there and maybe takes that team to the playoffs? So it's so hard to put a number next to these guys. I think Ritter is the only one that really has a shot to make a of a, a mark on his franchise. I mean, I hate to say Pickett. I mean, if Trubisky fails, I think Ritter and Pickett have the best chance to be immediate starters in the NFL. But um, yeah, I think. It, I'm not going to argue with any of these overalls or rankings. Or I, I'm interested to see Ritter at the top. I think it's just because of what I said. I think he has the most chance. Uh, yeah, and exactly. Overall size, like he is. All the, these other guys are just sitting. He's like the biggest athlete out of all these dudes. He's just a stud. Like I think, yeah, give him the extra two. That's fine. But he's on Atlanta, so to remember that. I chirp the Atlanta Falcons a lot, and I really like them, but they've just fucked me over on so many bets. No, yeah, they're on the no bet list. Yeah. Sure. They are indeed on the no bet list. All righty, and one last thing before we wrap up. I got the NFL best-selling jerseys of 2022 so far this year. Um, I don't have numbers, but I have who the leaders are uh, coming in at number 10. We have Joe Burrow with the Cincinnati Bengals. Nine, Patrick Mahomes with the Kansas City Chiefs. Eight, Justin Herbert with the Chargers. Seven, Cooper Cup with the Rams. Six, Mac Jones with the Patriots. Five, Tom Brady with the Bucks. Four, Kenny Pickett with the Steelers. Three, Devontae Adams with the Raiders. Two, Josh Allen with the Bills. And coming in at number one, Mr. Russell Wilson with the Denver Broncos. So I think it's a pretty interesting list. I like seeing Kenny Pickett up there at number four. You know, the new guy coming in and just selling a ton of jerseys. I like that. And uh, I don't think Russ is a surprise jumping over to Denver there. It's a sweet jersey. I, I, Huff, I know you want to get one if you didn't already. Yeah, um, yeah I think it's interesting how uh, three of the top four top selling jerseys are new names and new teams. I feel like that happened. Obviously, well. Josh Allen's still in Buffalo, but yeah, I mean, obviously, it makes sense. Last year, I think Stafford Rams was one of the top ones. Last year, T- I know TJ Watt was up there, and I know Stafford at the Rams was up there for top seller last year. Kenny Pickett in top five is actually ridiculous. I didn't expect that. That's Steeler Nation, dude. It is. When Huff and I went to the, when Huff and I went to the. Uh, draft day thing or whatever we did at Heinz Field they sold out before we even got in the door crazy he's got the support pretty interesting it's cool to see yeah, I definitely got to get a Russ Denver I, I, I'm, I have high hopes for him in Denver yeah I'm very excited to see Russ in Denver I'm excited for this NFL season can't come soon enough you guys got anything else so close we are almost there stick with us again talking about uniforms madden ratings some nfl or some other little nfl news uh nba and nhl but we're very close uh, a couple more episodes and then um we're going to be coming up on the nfl season and uh, not much else coming from me thanks for listening or thanks for listening stay tuned all the social medias for as we keep giving out a couple mlb picks here and there whenever we find a play that we like um Other than that, that's it going to do it for me. Thanks for listening. We'll see you guys next week. Yeah, appreciate it, guys. Another week in the books. Uh, Just squeaking by to get to the NFL season, NHL season, NBA, college college football, all that fun stuff. So a few more weeks. All right, that's going to do it. Episode 44 is now in the books for Hit the Books. Thanks for joining us. Have a good week. And that's going to do it for us this week on Hit the Books Podcast. Thank you for all the support week in and week out. Please be sure to share and check out our various social media platforms and check out our website. All the info is located in our link tree in the description below. And always remember to hit the books. Gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER.